Hello and welcome back to the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel where of course we're giving you all the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion. We're back again today with another video because Steve Bruce has been sacked as West Bromwich Albion manager. We're going to be chatting and giving a bit of reaction to the uh, sacking of Steve Bruce, talking about the pros and cons of that. We'll be giving sort of a, a bit of a view over his reign, looking at some possible low points, some high points if there are any. Um, and yeah, we'll be chatting all about Steve Bruce's reign, also a little bit about what's to come next, but hopefully there'll be a video on that in the coming days. But yeah, a big change at Albion as they sacked Steve Bruce and are now, uh, I suppose, managerless at the moment. So we'll be talking about that in today's video, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. It'd be great to hear uh, your views on the sacking. Uh, do you think it was the right move? I'd, I'd gather you probably did. Uh, as I think most Albion fans I've seen interacting on social media have, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe if you are new, and let's get straight into this video about Steve Bruce, who's been sacked as manager of West Bromwich Albion. You're watching the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel. For match previews, match day vlogs, match reactions, and more, make sure to subscribe to the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel. So, of course, let's firstly read out the statement and talk a little bit about how Albion announced it. Of course, we thought it was going to come at various parts of last week, if we have to be completely honest. There are plenty of times over the past sort of week and a half where we thought it should have and, and would have come, but it really hasn't. But, of course, it came this morning, Monday the 10th of October, uh, fairly early on in, fa in, on, in honesty. I was on my way to university and I thought, uh, oh, you know, club statement, Steve Bruce. And then when it said that there wasn't really anything to do you know, there wasn't, uh, you know, Steve Bruce, you know, on the Twitter page, it was just the link to the website and a statement. I thought, oh, God, they're going to have given him some more time. But instead, there was this statement to read on the club website. West Bromwich Albion have today parted company with manager Steve Bruce. Backroom staff Steve Agnew, Stephen Clements and Alex Bruce have also left the Hawthorns. The club would like to place on record its thanks to Steve Bruce and his coaching staff for their efforts since arriving in February. Under-21s coach Rich Beal will take over first-team affairs on an interim basis, assisted by James Morrison and Gary Rolsch, and the process of recruiting a new manager is now underway, and an appointment will be confirmed in due course. So, there we are. That is the statement that we got from the club regarding the sacking of Steve Bruce. Um, I mean, it wasn't much of a surprise, but it was a little bit of a surprise to me I thought that they weren't going to sack him. I thought that they were going to keep him. I thought maybe the compensation was a little bit too much. Maybe, you know, perhaps Ron Gurley was a little bit kind of like, oh, well, he is, you know, he's his appointment kind of. And he was the only man that he went to uh, looking for when he was trying to get a manager together to to take over. But after Valerian Ishmael's sacking and after um, West Brom CEO UK left the club as well. So I thought that Ron Gurley would have kept him because he was his appointment. He didn't want to maybe take the blame, the fall for that. And I think that that was kind of something that might have contributed to, um, to you know, him staying around. And I thought that would be interesting if he did. But then again, there was part of me that thought, you know, surely Gurley, you know, has to have a bit of sense about him and has to say that things haven't been good enough as of late and, and by far have been off the boil, to say the least. I mean, you know, inside the relegation zone, it's an appalling position to be in for a club of Albion's size. And I think it's, you know, it really is awful to see Albion, you know, a club just coming down from the Premier League um, and, you know, kind of having a good squad being in that position. It's not good enough. And I mean, we spoke about it on the podcast, myself and Tom from Baggy's Bulletin, spoke about this uh, um, in last week's episode and we kind of discussed, you know, are we actually overhyping the squad a little bit? But in my opinion, I'm not convinced that, that we are. I think that we're giving the squad a good justification or at least the starting 11, which is very good at this level. You know, it's really disappointing to see, the, the, you know, the position we find ourselves in. And, you know, for me, it all stems from the owner. I mean, Steve Bruce is not 100% culpable for the, the stuff that's going on uh, in any way off the pitch or any, you know, anything... Money-wise, I don't think that's anything to do with him, really. But I think it is really difficult um, to put it past him, the issues on the pitch and the coaching side. It doesn't look like a team that are too well coached. It doesn't look like a team or hasn't looked like a team that, you know, really drilled inside out, know their roles, know their duties. So, yeah, I think for me, Bruce is, um, yeah, uh, you know, it's quite difficult to see. Um, you know, where Bruce went from there, especially with the low points that we've had. So, yeah, let's talk about those low points. Let's discuss some of Bruce's uh, possible worst things uh, or worst parts of the reign. I think that'll be interesting to see. 
uh, because of course it was a, a, a difficult time, uh, you know, a difficult time during Bruce's run. Let's not, you know, beat about the bush. You know, it was a pretty dismal time. You know, we look at his managerial record at Albion, um, which goes a little bit something like this. It's 32 played, uh, eight wins, 12 draws and 12 losses. It's a 25% win percentage. That's the lowest of his managerial career at a particular club, which of course is not going to be good for him. I'm not convinced that, you know, he's going to find a big job in football. At, you know, I'm not sure there'll be too many jobs going for him in the Championship or Premier League anymore for, for me. Um, but yeah, let's talk a little bit about those low points of Bruce's reign and maybe those high points as well. You know, I think that there are plenty of different areas of, of his reign that, that, that were good. I mean, there were different games that we kind of looked at it and we were like, oh, you know, it's a really good performance there. I mean, I look at Fulham and Bournemouth, they're the two that come to mind from last season towards the end of last season as well. Um, you know, there's a couple, maybe, the, you know, the games, the Barnsley game, I know we were playing a pretty poor Barnsley side, but we still played well against those. Clutching at straws really a little bit, but some low points. Um, his first game, Sheffield United, was a pretty low point. That was kind of where we thought maybe the new manager bounce won't come as maybe we'd hoped. Uh, the Birmingham loss, I think, was another big one at the end of last season, 1-0 uh, away from home. The penalty uh, from Lyle Taylor settled that one. Uh, Nottingham Forest for West Brom nil was a massive low point for me. I thought that that was that was a real base for for Albion. Uh, as as for last season, I thought that that was that was a pretty big low, um, and I don't think you can get much worse than that. To be completely honest, then of course you move into this season. I don't think there were too many lows towards the start of this this season, but I think as we've kind of got into it and over the past sort of month or so, West Brom two, Birmingham City three was pretty awful. That was that was a horrible game to attend. Um, yeah, that was that was a you know a real you know an eye opener really for the fans. I think for for Bruce's management and how badly things are going actually on the pitch rather than just off it. We know the issues behind the scenes, owners and and money and loans and what have you. But that was a real sign that things weren't working on the pitch. Then move forward a couple of weeks to West Brom two, Swansea three. Same old story really at the Hawthorns. And then obviously Preston won, West Brom nil. And then obviously you could count the Luton game, although that wasn't actually that bad. But still a very toxic atmosphere in the stands. So, yeah, was it the right decision? I, I personally would, would say something had to give. And I think that if that was Bruce going, I think it was fair. It's annoyed me how we've sacked another manager personally, even though this is probably fair and justified. I think, you know... I look at the way that, you know, managers have gone in the past and it's difficult to kind of justify um, a couple of them, maybe. You know, you look last, even last season, you look at Ismail who left when we were fifth in the table. We're now sacking, we now delayed the sacking of Bruce to 22nd in the league. So for me, I think it's difficult, uh, you know, for Bruce to, to, to stand on, to, to have a leg to stand on after being, you know, 22nd in the league, 13 games played, only the one win, four losses and eight draws, I think is pretty shambolic. And, you know, to be sat amongst, you know, the, the the teams down there at the bottom of the league and not to be near the top with the squad that we've got, I think is um I think is pretty shameful. And I think that will be something that, you know, I guess, you know, will always work against Bruce. And I think that's a pretty awful telling of, of the way things have gone this season. It started off with some really good performances. You know, I look at Watford where, you know, we outplayed a really good team, unfortunate to lose. I thought we were much better than Burnley when they came to our place. But in the end of the day, the results haven't come. And if you're not getting results in football, you know, chances are you're not going to stick around for very long. So, yeah, for me, Bruce has, um, Bruce has done uh, a pretty dismal job at Albion, if we have to be honest. I don't think it... It doesn't, it doesn't solve all the problems, but it certainly might solve the problems on the pitch. You get a good coach in who can coach this good good side into playing some decent football. I think that you can be up there at the end of the season, but I personally think that we weren't going that way under Bruce. I think it was really difficult to see us heading that way as well. You know, the turnaround in form, the turnaround in atmosphere at the club, I think was always difficult to kind of see when we're um, playing in that sort of vein that the atmosphere at the club isn't good. The toxicity amongst the fans is is getting higher and higher by the game because things aren't improving, things are getting worse. And I think, you know, it's very difficult to see any way back for Bruce after the, after especially, you know, the Swansea game and, and you know, Preston was pretty bad as well. As soon as the fans all start chanting, you know that against you, you know that you're kind of done. And I think that that was where Bruce really probably knew that his time was up here at the Hawthorns and I think it's completely justified that he has gone. I mean, you know, I, I do feel for him and do have a bit of sympathy that maybe he wasn't allowed to bring in all the players. What sort of a difference would, would other players make? You know, the likes of Alzate and maybe Onomar bringing them in towards the end of the window. But for me, the team wasn't well, isn't, hasn't been well coached enough. I think that that's the difficult thing for me to see, I think, is, um, you know, how 
how the team is looks so disjointed and it doesn't look like it's it's got real cohesion between it. And I think that comes down to the manager with the players that he's got. Would somebody be getting better than twenty second place out of this out of this group of players? And I think absolutely. You know, even if even if we're not saying promotion, you know, out you know should not be inside the relegation zone. And you know, we said we wanted to get out of the league, but we certainly didn't mean uh, by going down a division. But yeah, that's uh, the difficult thing. But you know, as for people who could replace him, there's plenty of names being floated about. Roy Keane is the odds-on favourite, which is a little bit worrying. Not had a managerial job for ten years, which is quite concerning. Uh, Sean Dyche, another one, somebody that I personally wouldn't mind having at all. Chris Wilder, just been sat from Middlesbrough as well, is another option in there. There's plenty of options. It's whether out, who Albion are going to take that risk on. Are they going to go for a bit of a gamble? If somebody like Rob Edwards, who's just been sacked from, from Watford, wasn't given perhaps the time to show his full coaching qualities there, maybe he's a better coach than, than some might make out from his time at Watford, even though it's a very short time. Would we take a gamble on somebody like him? Would we go for an old sort of trusted head in somebody like Dice who could bring you back up um, by maybe playing a little bit uh, not the not the finest brand of football, but you know certainly effective and certainly can get a tune. But will he be able to get a tune out of this group of players? Were they a little bit more difficult to handle than perhaps we we thought um, they they would be this season? But yeah, those are my thoughts on Steve Bruce and and his sacking. Make sure you drop yours down in the comment section below. Let me know who you'd like to replace him. That'd be an interesting one. Uh, comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you're new, and that brings me to the end of this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.